Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In a major victory for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and indigenous and environmental activists everywhere, a judge has ordered the Dakota Access Pipeline to be shut down and emptied of all oil in the next 30 days, pending an environmental review. U.S. District Court Judge James Bosberg said the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has violated environmental law when it granted a permit for the pipeline without an extensive environmental assessment. The fight to stop DAPL, led by indigenous land defenders, catalyzed a major grassroots movement with the 2016 resistance at Standing Rock, watched by millions of people around the world. We'll have more on the story after headlines. In other pipeline news, the Supreme Court Monday ruled construction on the Keystone XL pipeline must remain on hold while it undergoes further regulation and a lengthy permitting process. The ruling was a win for environmental environmental and indigenous activists who have long been fighting the project. However, it was tempered by the justices concurrently clearing the way for a number of other pipelines to move forward under a fast-track permitting process. Thousands of international students enrolled at universities in the United States could face deportation if their schools switch to online-only courses in the fall due to the coronavirus pandemic. On Monday, ICE, that's Immigration and Customs Enforcement, issued guidance stating, quote, active students currently in the United States enrolled in such programs must depart the country or take other measures such as transferring to a school with in-person instruction to remain in lawful status, unquote. ICE also said U.S. Customs and Border Protection will not permit students to enter the United States. ICE released the guidance just hours after Harvard University announced all classes will be online. Senator Elizabeth Warren slammed the move, writing on Twitter, quote, kicking international students out of the U.S. during a global pandemic because their colleges are moving classes online for physical distancing hurts students. It's senseless, cruel and xenophobic, she said. The American Council on Education described the ICE guidance as, quote, horrifying. One million international students attend U.S. colleges and universities. Hospitals in parts of Florida, Texas, Arizona and California are running out of intensive care unit beds as coronavirus cases continue to surge. In Texas, the number of COVID-19 hospitalizations has quadrupled over the past month. In St. Petersburg, Florida, five hospitals have run out of intensive care unit beds. In Miami, indoor restaurants have been ordered to close again less than two months after being reopened. Nationwide, the death toll from COVID-19 has topped up to 130,000, and COVID cases are rising in 41 states. At least 14 states have reported single-day highs in cases recently. On Monday, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warned the United States is still knee-deep in the first wave of the pandemic. A series of circumstances associated with various states and cities trying to open up in the sense of getting back to some form of normality has led to a situation where we've now had record-breaking cases. Uh, two days ago, it was at 57,500. So within a period of a week and a half, we've almost doubled the number of cases. So in answer to your first question, uh, we are still knee-deep in the first wave of this. Dr. Fauci also said immunity provided by antibodies may be finite and that protection from any potential vaccine might be short-lived. The pandemic continues to hit communities of color the hardest. Newly released federal data show African American and Latinx people are nearly three times more likely to be infected and twice as likely to die from the virus compared to their white neighbors. In California, the top medical officer for the state's prison system has been ousted following the death of six prisoners from COVID-19 at San Quentin State Prison, where more than 1,300 prisoners have tested positive. 
Meanwhile, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has announced she's tested positive for the virus, as well as other members of her family, including her husband. On the international front, the death toll in Brazil has topped 65,000, the second highest in the world, behind the United States. On Monday, Brazil's far-right President Jair Bolsonaro was tested for COVID-19 after experiencing symptoms. Meanwhile, in South Africa, the number of confirmed cases has topped 200,000. In other news from Africa, the World Health Organization warned Monday an additional 500,000 people could die from AIDS and related diseases in sub-Saharan Africa over the next two years due to interruption in services and treatment caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The World Health Organization said that shortage extends to scores of countries around the world. Under enormous pressure, the Trump administration has finally begun releasing details on who benefited from a $660 billion relief program that was supposed to help small businesses during the COVID-19 pandemic. Recipients of funds from the Paycheck Protection Program include seven members of Congress or their spouses, President Trump's longtime personal lawyer, Mark Kasowitz, Jared Kushner's family business, a sushi restaurant at Trump International Hotel, the anti-tax activist Grover Norquist, a number of private equity-backed restaurant chains, and a shipping business owned by the family of Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, the wife of the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. For months, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin opposed the release of these details, claiming it was, quote, proprietary information. Anti-Asian American hate incidents are soaring across the United States following the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. A new site tracking hate crimes reports over 2,100 incidents have occurred since March. The site was launched by the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council and Chinese for Affirmative Action. Both groups have criticized President Trump for describing COVID-19 as the Chinese virus and Kung flu. A warning to our viewers, this story contains disturbing images. Authorities in Indiana are investigating an apparent violent, racist attack on a black man that took place over the weekend. Vox Booker posted video of the disturbing encounter on social media, in which five men pinned him to a tree, beat him, and threatened to lynch him. The attack happened at Lake Monroe, near Bloomington, on July 4th. Booker, a member of the Monroe County Human Rights Commission in Bloomington, says he was able to get out of their grip after passersby intervened to get the white attackers off him. And another warning to our viewers, this story also contains disturbing footage. Outrage is mounting in Phoenix, Arizona, over the fatal police shooting of 28-year-old James Porter Garcia while he was in a parked car in a residential driveway Saturday. Four officers surrounded the car. At least two of the officers had their guns drawn and pointed at the car. An eyewitness who filmed the shooting said Garcia had been sleeping in the car, and others who knew the victim say he was unarmed. But police Police officers claim he armed himself, which led to the officer shooting and killing him. Protesters are demanding police release body cam footage. In New York, Amy Cooper, the white woman who called 911 and falsely claimed a black man in Central Park was threatening her, was charged Monday with filing a false report. Christian Cooper, the man in question, who was in the park birdwatching, had in fact simply asked Amy Cooper to leash her dog. Chris Cooper filmed the interaction, which quickly went viral. In Georgia, Republican Governor Brian Kemp declared a state of emergency Monday, activating 1,000 National Guard members following weeks of unrest and a weekend marked by increased gun violence. Five people were killed over the weekend, including eight-year-old girl named Sicoria Turner, who was killed Saturday night in Atlanta while riding in a car with her mom. Sicoria Turner was killed close to the Wendy's, where Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by police last month in the parking lot. 
CNN's reporting a draft document to ban the display of Confederate flags at military bases has been circulating at the Pentagon. If such a policy goes ahead, it could create major tension between the military leadership and Trump, who's defended Confederate symbols and threatened last week to veto the National Defense Authorization Act if it includes a provision to rename bases that are named after Confederate leaders. A fire last week at Iran's Natanz nuclear facility has caused significant damage and set back Iran's nuclear development program, according to government officials. Iranian security officials say they've uncovered the cause of the fire, but have yet to release further details. The New York Times cited a Middle Eastern intelligence official who says the site was destroyed by a bomb planted by Israel. The fire at the uranium enrichment facility is the latest in a string of fires and explosions in Iran, including a major blast at a military complex last month and an explosion at a medical clinic in Tehran one week ago, which killed 19 people and was attributed to a gas leak. In Iraq. A leading expert on the Islamic State and other extremist groups was shot dead Monday by unidentified gunmen in front of his home in Baghdad. Hisham al-Hashimi was also an outspoken critic of Iraq's political elite and corruption. On Sunday, the day before he was killed, Hashimi tweeted, "'The rights, blood and dignity of Iraqis have been lost and their money gone into the pockets of corrupt politicians.'" Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. is considering banning TikTok and other Chinese social media apps. Pompeo suggested TikTok users could be handing over their private data to the Chinese Communist Party. The comments came amidst increasing tension between the U.S. and China over the coronavirus and the situation in Hong Kong after China imposed its new national security law last week. TikTok said earlier Monday it would stop running the app in Hong Kong in light of recent events. Twitter, Facebook and WhatsApp recently announced they will not process data requests from law enforcement agencies in Hong Kong. In the Dominican Republic, tourism industry leader Luis Abinader has been elected as the new president, putting an end to the ruling Dominican Liberation Party's 16 years in power. The election had previously been suspended due to the coronavirus pandemic, but was held Sunday with a higher voter turnout, despite the worsening outbreak in the Dominican Republic. The country is one of the worst hit in the Caribbean, with over 38,000 cases and more than 800 deaths. Lawmakers in Germany voted to phase out coal use entirely by 2038, the first major economy to make such a commitment. Germany has also said it would eliminate nuclear energy by the end of 2022. But environmental groups say the move does not go far enough to mitigate the climate crisis, pointing out Germany burns more lignite coal than any other country. Climate activists and the German Green Party say the government should phase out coal by 2030 at the latest. This is Green Party leader Annalena Bierbrock. It would have been a chance to fight the climate crisis with the same vivacity and determination we fought the coronavirus crisis. But that you did not do. You did not do that. Instead, you are de facto presenting an 18-year financial coal protection law. In election news, Supreme Court justices unanimously ruled Monday states can compel Electoral College members to support the candidates who won the state's popular vote in a presidential election. In 2016, there were 10 rogue or so-called faithless electors who refused to cast a vote for the candidate they were pledged to support. And campaigners are urging consumers to support Blackout Day 2020 today. The campaign urges black Americans not to spend any money to highlight their economic power and as a means to pressure politicians and businesses to work toward ending systemic racism. Those who need to make purchases are being encouraged to support black-owned businesses. The initiative was spearheaded by social media personality and activist Calvin Martyr. Major companies, including Procter & Gamble and Cisco Systems, have announced support support for the campaign. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, with Juan Gonzalez, broadcasting from his home in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world.